Ryan, convicted killer Oba Chandler will be put to death in less than a day. Only a reprieve by the governor or the U.S. Supreme Court can change that. In 1989, Chandler murdered three Ohio tourists and dumped their bodies in Tampa Bay. He's been on death row now for 17 years. To three tourists just in from Ohio, Oba Chandler must have seemed like a friendly local, offering to share the beauty of a Tampa Bay sunset on his sailboat. But to police and prosecutors who know what happened next, Chandler is a nightmare in human form. They were found nude from the waist down. Their feet were tied together. We believe they were all three raped. And then duct tape was across not only their mouth, but at some point he put duct tape across their nose. Former St. Petersburg police detective Cindra Leedy is talking about Joan Rogers and her two teenage daughters who were thrown into the bay to drown. Chandler will die for these murders on Tuesday only because the ropes that bound Joan, Michelle, and Christy to concrete blocks did not hold. He doesn't deserve to live. He just needs to die. And it's nearly certain that he will. Chandler's lawyer admits they're out of bullets in their appeal, and Governor Rick Scott is unlikely to make a dramatic phone call at the last minute to call off the execution. It's rare enough that it makes for nice television or movies. But in the real world, it just doesn't happen. Stetson Law Professor Charles Rose doesn't see any out for Oba Chandler, but he points out that the death penalty has a cost. DNA tests have proven that innocent people have been condemned to death in Florida. The lengthy appeals are also more costly than life sentences and painful for families. In this case, Hal Rogers, the father and husband of the victims who now leads a quiet life of a farmer in rural Ohio. Is justice delayed, justice denied? You have a loved one who dies, and then it's five years, 10 years, 15 years of appeals, maybe even 20, before the, ever, the actual execution. It's a, it's a personal question that has to be answered. Well, I spoke to Hal Rogers this afternoon and asked him whether a life sentence issued in 1994 would have been easier for him than a death sentence carried out 17 years later. He said he hadn't really thought about it. He is not attending, but I will be among the witnesses to this execution at 4 o'clock tomorrow. It'll be my first, so I, I don't know, frankly, exactly what to expect, but I will share my observations in reports from the state prison tomorrow.